Welcome to another educative episode of AgroLink, the show that promotes agriculture in Africa with a focus on the University of Cape Coast, particularly the School of Agriculture. This episode will focus on the Agricultural Engineering Department and look at the various initiatives taken to promote agriculture in Africa. My name is Dr. Robert Sapon Amwa. I'm the head of the department, Agric Engineering. The Department of Agric Engineering was established in 1991 as one of the academic departments in the School of Agriculture. As, a, as an academic discipline, we are engaged in the training of students, and I mean agriculture students, in the application of engineering principles to facilitate agricultural operations. We also do research in agricultural engineering related technologies and disseminate these technologies through students to farmers for application on the field. Our areas of study and research cover four key specialist areas which include farm power and machinery engineering, soil and water engineering, post harvest engineering and farm structures and environmental control. Now within these units, we run a number of programs, both at the BSc level and also at the PhD level. At the BSc level, together with the other departments, we run BSc in general agriculture. And in this program, we teach engineering-related courses for the BSc students. We also run a special BSc agro-processing program, which is meant to prepare the students for a career in the food industry. At the graduate level, we have PhD and MPhil programs in irrigation, engineering and management. We also have MPhil food and post harvest technology and then we run agricultural mechanization technology for MPhil and PhD students. The department has been doing research in a number of areas across the various disciplines I've mentioned. In irrigation engineering we have been championing research in deficit irrigation, which involves the application of water less than what the crop actually needs, about 80% of what the crop actually needs, in order to determine whether the deficit will have some stresses on the crop performance and whether it will also compromise the yield or not. The intention of such a research is to cut down on the water, amount of water that is used for irrigation because water is becoming scarce and there is competition for the use of water for other purposes. So if we are able for various crops determine that they can accommodate less than what is actually required naturally, then we can save water. We have also been doing research in the application of some models to predict crop yield. FAO has developed models like aqua crop model or crop what model. These models are based on or they use some environmental parameters like the temperature, the rainfall, the sunshine and other environmental conditions in particular areas to determine how they affect or they would affect particular crops. And so by use of these models, we are able to predict for a particular year the yield of crops and advise farmers in that respect. We also have been doing research in food and post-harvest technology. In food technology, we have been developing 
new food products by fortifying foods like gari with nutrients that enrich them. So we have been enriching gari with, for example, sweet potato. Sweet potato does contain beta carotene, which is good for the eye and it also improves the immune system. By enriching gari, for example, with sweet potato, we, we improve its nutrient value. You know, gari is something is sometimes um, mixed with oil and sold by the street size. Um, we have found that sweet potato, you know, oil does contain beta carotene, but it is known through research that the beta carotene content in sweet potato is much higher. And in fact, sweet potato is one of the healthiest foods in the world. And so we do research to enrich gari and other foodstuffs with some particular nutrients like sweet potato, like tovum, like avocado, in order to enrich their nutrient composition. We have been also carrying out research in the solar drying of crops. Crops like cassava is dried for the production of starch and for fermented cassava which is processed into what we traditionally call konkonte. We carry out research on the drying rate, the drying time and optimize these drying conditions in order not to compromise the nutrient value of these crops during drying. So we do solar drying, we do sun drying, we do oven drying for various kinds of crops. We have also been doing research on the non-destructive assessment of the quality of many produce. We are currently calibrating an instrument that could be used for quick assessment of the quality of some food stuffs. Uh, recently there were issues with food fraud, food adulteration and etc. Through such research we are able to make a very quick assessment of the quality of the produce. In fact we have various platforms through which we disseminate our research findings. There are various platforms through which we disseminate our research findings. First of all we work directly with farmers, especially farmers in the central region and western region, to disseminate technologies to them. We have disseminated, for example, technologies, uh, post, uh, sweet potato storage technologies to sweet potato farmers at Koforidia in the central region. We disseminate our research findings through a number of platforms. First of all, we work directly with farmers in farmer field fora and use those platforms to train farmers on the new technologies, new and proven technologies that we find. For example, we have disseminated storage technologies to sweet potato farmers at Kuforidia in the central region on the Jukwa Road. We have also disseminated irrigation technologies to vegetable farmers at Darampon, also in the central region. And currently we are working with farmers at Tibre Bay on the Anglo Gold operational area to disseminate spray tube irrigation technologies to the farmers. Now besides working with farmers, we also disseminate our technologies through a platform we call Supervised Enterprise Project. This is a special project run by the School of Agriculture through which we train students on new technologies and they go out to disseminate the technologies to farmers. Now besides that, internationally, we do a number of publications in reputable journals. Now when you publish in a journal and you see that you are cited by an author elsewhere, the implication is that they are studying your research 
for possible application in other areas. So through these platforms, we disseminate our technologies. We also attend conferences and make presentations through which we disseminate our technologies throughout the world. Yeah, when we disseminate our findings, especially to farmers, these are farmers we are linked with. And so we continuously monitor the performance of the technologies that we disseminate to them to see whether or not they are implementing them and whether or not the technologies are actually working. And so we do have full up we do follow up studies to understand the impact of the technologies that we extend to our farmers. Agriculture in Africa, and for that matter Ghana, is not making much headway. And there are a number of factors that account for this low performance of agriculture. First of all, our land tenure system means that farmers do not have access to large tracts of land. The farm sizes in Africa are quite small. In many cases, they are just about less than two hectares. And on, on such a small farm land, the farmer cannot operate commercially. The farming system is based on subsistence level. And so he only grows to feed the family with a little excess, with a little surplus for, for sale. So one problem is that our farming system is subsistence based. Now the second reason why we are not making major strides is that we have not injected technology like control and modified atmosphere techniques, all of which reduce post harvest losses but if you come down to, to our part of the world, you see that we are not employing the new and exciting technologies that are driving agriculture elsewhere. And so for our agricultural system, for our agriculture to make a headway, it is important that we inject into agriculture new and improved technologies. Adoption of mechanization is actually an evolutionary process. And there are a number of factors that determine the adoption rate. Some of the factors are socioeconomic, others are cultural, whilst others are environmental factors. Economically, our farmers are, so to speak, poor. Mechanization, on the, however, is capital intensive, requiring very costly equipment like tractors and its implements. These are very expensive, so the ordinary farmer cannot afford to purchase a tractor. For that reason, they are not able to mechanize their operations. And the second reason being that their farm sizes are too small to justify the use of expensive equipment like tractors. Mechanized equipment are normally designed for large-scale operations and when used on small farmlands economically it doesn't pay because economies of scale does not favor the use of such expensive equipment on small farmlands. For this reason mechanization is not making a headway in our part of the world. Another reason why farmers are not adopting mechanization is also probably the fear for the fear of uh, labor substitution because once you bring an equipment like a planter into a community, it means that it's going to displace labor. Uh, recently there was an observation in the northern part of Ghana where someone brought a two-row planter to grow cereals. But the community were complaining that he's going to deprive women in that community of their sources of livelihood. You know, in our part of the world, there is also an argument that probably there is little justification in mechanizing our agriculture because labor is, is cheap. And obviously our farmlands are also too small. 
So if labor is that cheap, the question is why mechanize agriculture? Nonetheless, research has shown recently that the demand for mechanization is increasing in Ghana, even on small scale farmlands. On small scale farmlands, we could practice what, what we call uh, selective mechanization. What it means is that we may not mechanize all the operations. We may not fully mechanize all the operations from plowing to harrowing, weeding and harvesting. But there are some of the unit operations that are very difficult to um, execute manually. And for such operations, it is obviously needed to mechanize them. And so um, the demand for the mechanization of some operations called selective mechanization is actually gaining grounds in Ghana. We have a lot of partnership with institutions in Ghana and outside Ghana. Within Ghana, our partner institution is the KNUSD, which is a sister agricultural uh, engineering department. So we have a lot of partnerships for the exchange of staff for tuition and also we collaborate in various project works. Besides that, we have partnership with some organizations in Ghana. For example, we have been working closely with Dizengov, which is an irrigation uh, company for the supply of irrigation equipment, equipment for training and installation of irrigation equipment. We also have partnership with a similar company we call Famous Enterprises, sorry, Famous Irrigation, also in Accra. Um, besides that, um, we have partnerships across Africa. There is a platform we call Roof Forum. Roof Forum means Regional Universities Forum for capacity building in Africa. So we have a number of member universities in Africa, of which the University of Cape Coast is a member. And through that platform, we have linkages with a number of uh, universities in Africa, especially in East Africa, for the exchange of staff and students. And we also do collaborative research. We have also linkages with other universities in Europe. Currently, we are working with Queen's University in the UK for the development of a non-destructive technique for the assessment of quality of produce. We are also working in partnership with Westmar University in Germany for the development of a clay tube irrigation system. We are also working in partnership with UC Davis in the US for the dissemination of drip irrigation technology to farmers in Ghana. And we continuously build partnerships with other universities across the world. We are in partnership with Jiangsu University in China. They have trained many of our staff in agricultural engineering technologies. So we continue to build partnerships across the world. The way forward for this department is to become a full-fledged agricultural engineering department. The Department of Agric Engineering is the hub around which a school of engineering is going to be developed in the near future. Say by 2020, the University of Cape Coast is going to run a number of engineering uh, programs. And we are leading this process of establishing a school of engineering. So we want to be a center of excellence for the training of students in agricultural engineering. There are a number of projects on our hands. First of all, we want to establish a center of excellence for food quality assessment here in our department. The greenhouses have been imported into the country for use by farmers. But reports are showing that 
many farmers are unable to use them efficiently. We want to study the compatibility of such designs with our environment. So currently there is an ongoing project for studies in greenhouse horticulture and also in deficit irrigation. Uh, finally, I wish to emphasize that universities are partners in, in development and therefore there is the need for government to partner universities in developmental programs. Currently there is a program being rolled out by government that is a planting for food and jobs program. And yet we see little involvement of universities. And yet there is much that we can do, especially with respect to the training of farmers in irrigation technologies and in post-harvest technologies. So we want to be involved as an institution in these programs and equally we want to extend, extend a hand of fellowship to industrial partners for assistance in the training of students. Uh, as a technical discipline, the technical training of students is a shared responsibility between industry and academia. Uh, normally we send students out for industrial attachment, but sometimes students find it very difficult to get placements. The issue is that as an institution we may not have all the facilities needed for the practical training of students. So we want to involve industry more and more in the practical training of our students. In the new engineering program that we are going to roll out, we want it to be unique so that those who pass out of our engineering program will have practical skills and to be able to do that our intention is to work in partnership with, with industry for the training of students. So we want inter industries in Ghana to open up to universities and especially students and train them for the, for the benefit of our nation. Plans are far advanced for the introduction of a number of engineering programs in UCC. These include BSc Agriculture Engineering, BSc Chemical Engineering, BSc Water and Sanitary Engineering, and then we are also going to mount innovative engineering programs like Renewable Energy Engineering, Petroleum Engineering, Nuclear Engineering, Corrosion Engineering. These are, these are all new programs, many of which are not being run in other universities. So UCC is going to lead in the introduction of new engineering programs in universities in Ghana.